The title of our previous video was kind of provocative. It asked, is nitrox dangerous? Enriched air nitrox is a gas that divers use that contains greater than 21% oxygen and less than 79% nitrogen. By decreasing the nitrogen content, nitrox allows an increase in our non-decompression limit and a decrease in our surface interval, all of which adds up to more time underwater, which is awesome for us divers. So we can certainly say that nitrox is not a dangerous gas, but if used incorrectly, it does have risks. And one of the primary risks is that of oxygen toxicity. So to dive safely with nitrox, we need to know three basic things. What is my maximum PO2 or partial pressure of oxygen? What is partial pressure of oxygen to begin with? What is the percentage of oxygen in my tank or fraction of inspired oxygen? What is my maximum operating depth? What is the deepest I can go given the percentage of oxygen in my tank and what my maximum PO2 is. All three are interrelated, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Hey guys, welcome to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle, and if you're a first time viewer to our channel, welcome, we are glad you are here. We are here talking about, well, everything related to the sport that we love, and if you love it too, if you love to scuba dive, dive into everything scuba. Like I said on our previous show, we covered the very basics of what nitrox is, what are the benefits to diving with nitrox. If you haven't seen that show, click the link up above, go check that out, and then come back and join us here because we're gonna share some really important information today on maximum partial pressures of oxygen, maximum operating depths, and how we figure all that out. We are going to visit something called Dalton's Law. What Dalton's Law stipulates is that each gas in a substance exerts its own pressure to effectively make up the total pressure of that gas. So within a cylinder, within your body. If we look at the equation here, PT is total pressure, which is represented by this big pi. PA is our oxygen and PB is our nitrogen. The term partial pressure refers to the partial pressure of oxygen as it exerts its pressure within the total pressure of a gas. You could also say that there's a partial pressure of nitrogen if there's only two gases in this. You're probably like, okay, well, tell me the good stuff, okay? Uh, I get it, I get that a partial pressure is part of a gas within uh, an object or a cylinder. What's the maximum? Where, is, where do I stop? Right here is the numbers. For our PO2 concentration, our maximum PO2 as a recreational diver, we should never go beyond 1.4 atmospheres or bar. We have what's called a contingency pressure. So in the event of an emergency that you have to go a little deeper to do something in an emergency situation only, you could expose yourself to 1.6 for a very short period of time. And again, at this point, maybe these numbers don't quite really mean a lot to you, but we're gonna get to the calculations to show you how we arrive at these numbers. What we really should know is above 1.6, and there's obviously variability within each individual person or human as to how their body responds to oxygen, but above 1.6 is where we really run the risk of central nervous system toxicity. What could happen if we go above 1.6? Above a partial pressure of 1.6, we may experience some of these symptoms. We use the acronym VENTID, V-E-N-T-I-D, V for visual disturbances, E for ear ringing or auditory changes, N for nausea, vomiting, T for twitching or muscle spasms, I for irritability, and D for dizziness. You start to experience any of these symptoms while diving nitrox, you need to ascend at a slow rate immediately. The worst case scenario with exceeding your partial pressure of oxygen could lead to convulsions or seizure, which could occur at any time above that limit without warning, and that could lead to losing the regulator from your mouth and ultimately drowning. I'm not saying these things to scare divers or to scare you away from using nitrox. It is a very safe and well-proven gas, but we need to dive within our limits. Just like any other part of diving, there is risk involved, but we need to know how to manage that risk and so let's get to that. What is the maximum depth that I can go to safely without violating my maximum partial pressure of oxygen, which we stated is 1.4? Let me introduce you to my triangular friend here. 
This is known as, sometimes people call it Dalton's triangle, some people call it the Magnet triangle, but he has three portions to him. The upper portion, your PO2, partial pressure of oxygen, which we stated maximum is going to be 1.4. Don't even think about going to the contingency of 1.6. Lower portion of the triangle, we've got pressure in atmospheres, absolute pressure, and we know that pressure relates to depth. We showed you that on our previous episode. For every 10 meters, 33 feet we descend, we add one atmosphere of pressure. So we know that relates to depth. On this side, we have FiO2. That stands for fraction of inspired oxygen, which really means what is the percentage content of oxygen in my cylinder? So the reason we might call it a magic triangle is because it's really simple to figure out how to solve for any part of this. If I want to solve for my pressure and I know my PO2 and I know my fraction of inspired oxygen, all I have to do is divide that number by that number to give me my pressure. If I want to solve for my fraction of inspired oxygen, say you know what the depth is and the pressure is going to be, you want to go visit a rack what would be the best mix of uh, nitrox for me to use so I don't violate 1.4? Divide 1.4 by whatever your pressure is at the given depth that you want to go to. And lastly, if you want to solve for your PO2, if you know what the pressure is, you know what the inspired fraction of oxygen is, you multiply these two numbers together to give you your partial pressure of oxygen. In this example, we are trying to solve for P or pressure. And because pressure relates to depth, it's going to tell me what my maximum operating depth is that I can safely dive to with a maximum partial pressure of 1.4. We need to figure out what the fraction of inspired oxygen is. How do we do that? Well, part of your certification process is we show you how to analyze a cylinder using an oxygen analyzer so that you can come up with the percentage of the oxygen in that cylinder. So let's do an example to show you how easy this is. In this example, we're gonna plug in the maximum partial pressure of 1.4, and we are going to dive with 32% nitrox, or nitrox 1, E-A-N-X 1. Remember though, that is a percentage, so we have to convert it to a decimal, so it's 0.32. We divide 1.4 by 0.32, and therefore we come up with a pressure of 4.375. Now we know the pressure, how do we figure out the depth? Let me show you that. So now that we solve for P or pressure, we need to figure out how does that pressure relate to depth as it relates to having a maximum PO2 of 1.4. What is the maximum operating depth I can go to without going above 1.4? MOD, maximum operating depth. So for metric, we are going to take that ambient pressure that we calculated, the P, we're gonna remove one from it. That turns it into a gauge pressure. We then multiply that by 10. So 4.375 minus one multiply by 10 gives us 33.75 meters. So using enriched air nitrox 32, our PO2 would be 1.4 at 33.75 meters. With Imperial, similar, except we are going to multiply by 33. 4.375 minus one multiplied by 33, 111.375 feet. Essentially 111 feet is the maximum depth you can still do a lot of diving from zero to 111 feet, right? What if we just got rid of all of the nitrogen and went diving with pure oxygen? Let's figure that out. So using Dalton's triangle, our partial pressure or maximum of 1.4, if we're using pure oxygen, 100% oxygen, this fraction of inspired oxygen will be 1.0. So 1.4 divided by 1.0 leads to 1.4. In metric, if we then figure out what our maximum operating depth is, four meters. In imperial, 13.2 feet. We wouldn't get very far diving on 100% oxygen. And if we even put in our contingency partial pressure of 1.6, the maximum that we could get to without re potentially causing serious life-threatening injury is 19.8 feet or six meters. Now, there are some divers, and within the rebreather training, once we got to around that 20 feet point, 
we would pump our partial pressure up to around 1.5. And the reason that we did that is because by increasing the oxygen concentration in your body, you're able to degas that nitrogen and decompress a little bit faster. So there are technical divers, rebreather divers, who will play with these numbers in order to increase the amount of degassing and decrease their decompression time, but they're never gonna violate this number. We never wanna be above 1.6 contingency. If you guys are hanging in there with me, I know there's been a lot of calculations and math and various things. Um, we're all divers, we love to be in the water, but there's some basic principles and theory that we wanna get down here. But I got some good news for you. You're probably sitting there thinking, man, Lyle, I mean, if I'm gonna go nitrox diving, do I have to like bring my dive tables and like do calculations? And uh, the answer is no, you don't. Um, almost any place that you're going to be supplied nitrox from will have a nice big book. In that book, it's gonna give you maximum operating depth based on the percentage of oxygen in that cylinder. Importantly though, you should never get on a dive boat or go to a dive shop and just have someone hand you a cylinder. They tell you, hey, that's got 34, 32, 36% oxygen in it and take their word for it. Not because they're dishonest people, but you are responsible for your own safety as a diver. And therefore, the gas analysis, the oxygen analysis should be done either by you or in front of you so you can witness exactly what is in that tank and you can figure out what your safe maximum operating depth is. My favorite way to record my MOD is through an app on my phone because I always have my phone with me. My favorite Nitrox app is free, which is called Nitrox Buddy. And once you open it within the settings, you can see that you have various options you can choose from. 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. We're gonna leave it on 1.4 and metric or imperial, and we're gonna leave it at a maximum O2 of 40% as recreational divers. Once you've analyzed your tank, you can input what your O2 content is, and it will calculate your maximum operating depth for you. So you don't have to do Dalton's triangle calculations in your head. Another nice aspect of this app is, say you wanted to dive to a rack that's at, say, 120 plus feet. This way you can calculate what the best mixture of nitrox would be to remain at 1.4 or less for your PO2. And lastly, it will allow you to do equivalent air depth calculations. And that is a topic for a whole different video. The other part of the good news is here, if you own a dive computer, most modern dive computers nowadays have uh, nitrox capabilities. Part of the certification process, which we'll cover in just a few minutes, is showing you how to get into the software on your dive computer to alter the inspired oxygen content and your dive computer will then tell you what your maximum operating depth is. In fact, on my computers, I even set alarms on those. My dive computer will alarm within 10 feet of my maximum operating depth. It's gonna ring bells, it might vibrate on my arm, but it's gonna tell me, hey, you are getting close to your maximum operating depth. In a second, guys, we're gonna talk about the certification process and what that entails. I truly believe that every diver should be Nitrox certified. It's such a beneficial certification to have. If you know of anyone about ready to take their Nitrox class, if you're a dive master, dive master candidate, or working towards becoming an instructor, share this with your friends. Feel free to share this below. And if you're getting some benefit from it, drop us a like. We'd love to have a like on this. It really helps our channel to spread the word and share everything scuba. So who is allowed to use nitrox? You need to be nitrox certified. You need to have that base theoretical knowledge, which we covered uh, from a certification, uh, whatever your agency may be. I am a PADI instructor, so the PADI certification process looks like must be nitrox certified to rent or use nitrox uh, to get it from a boat, to get it from a dive shop. If you want to take the class um, and you're an open water diver 15 or over, then you can become Nitrox certified by taking that class. Many of our students will certify during their open water training and that gives them uh, some additional great information in terms of the theory behind diving uh, and the science and also the practical application with an instructor. So a uh, couple of different ways that gets done, either through e-learning or instructor-led. 
hopefully you're getting from this that I love the science of diving. I love spending time teaching this in person. Uh, instructor lad is, is always a great way to go. And then practical applications, the things you're going to learn during uh, the class. Uh, after you completed the knowledge development, you're going to spend time with a instructor. He's going to show you how to analyze a tank and you're going to do that yourself to figure out your oxygen percentage. And also if you have a dive computer or if the shop gives you one, they're going to show you how to alter the fraction of inspired oxygen so that dive computer can then tell you what your maximum operating depth is. During that class, um, your fourth, you generally have four open water dives. On that fourth dive, we'll have them plan the dive. And then we do one additional dive beyond that for the certification process. Now that you know about the benefits of nitrox, how it works and the theory behind it, and you know that a rebreather is essentially a nitrox mixing machine, we are gonna show you how to build up a rebreather, what's entailed in that buildup, how do we test it before we dive to make sure it's safe. Click the link down below me. If you wanna learn more about a rebreather series, click the link to the left of my head.